Hello and welcome to this week's Facebook and LinkedIn Live. My name is Elizabeth Willits and I'm from Investing in Women. I'm going to be chatting today with Dr. Maria Evans and we're going to be talking all about how you can go from overwhelmed and unconfident to knowing exactly what you want to do using something called positive intelligence. So Maria is going to be giving us all the insights into what positive intelligence actually is and how we can use it to help us go from overwhelmed and unconfident to being clear, focused and go-getting. Um, so as people are logging on, if you can let us know if you can hear us all okay, give us a like or an emoji, that would be fab. But today I'm going to be chatting with Dr. Maria Evans from a company called Headline Communications. We're going to be talking all about how you can go from overwhelmed and unconfident to knowing exactly what you want to do using something called positive intelligence. So thank you so much, Maria, for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to meet with you and find out a little bit more about you and positive intelligence and how we can use it to getting really clear and focused on achieving our goals. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. No, absolutely. So I'd not heard of positive intelligence and perhaps some people that are watching this um, today now or on the replay might not have heard about it either. So could you give us a bit of an overview as to what positive intelligence actually is? Of, of course. So I sort of think about it in terms of, I think we've got very good at understanding that we need um, to maintain our bodies and physical fitness and so forth. Um, and so we understand that, you know, we should be walking the stairs and going to the gym, da, 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 da. I think we're aware now of the need to look after our mental well-being, but we don't necessarily think about it in the same way. So good physical exercise is when we get into the habit of doing it all the time. Good mental health, good mental well-being is when it's habitual. It's something that we realise it's never going to be something that we can just tick off the to-do list and go, that's it. I'm sorted out. My mental well-being is going to be fine for the rest of my life. It's something that we have to look after all the time. And a way of doing that is through using techniques like positive intelligence. So positive intelligence looks at how we can quieten those noisy, destructive, horrible voices that go in our head. We often call it the inner critic and activate the stronger more Yoda-like. So for those of you who are Star Wars fans, you know, that sort of very calm ability to look at problems and come at it in a, in a calm, stress-free way, accepting that there's always going to be problems. It's how we deal with them. Okay. And that's positive intelligence. And that's, so a way of doing it is a set of tools that have been developed under this trade name of positive intelligence. Okay. Right. So what how did you get interested in it? How did you hear about positive intelligence and what so, was your interest? There is, there is a free test that you can do online. And so I stumbled across this about two years ago because I'm always fascinated in sort of those personality assessment tests where yes. you find out what sort of person you are and, and so forth. And I came across this and I thought it was a really useful thing in terms of understanding myself. So the, the premise of the assessment test is that we all have a mixture of 10 different ways in which we self-sabotage, in which we hold ourselves back from being the best that we can be. Um, and overruling all of them is a judge. And I knew that I was very self-judgmental. I think we often know that inner critic that tells you, oh, you're being an idiot for doing that. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? Da, 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 da. What I didn't realise um, until I came across positive intelligence is that the judge is broken down into three elements. There's the self-judgment. There's the judgment of others, which is, oh, you idiot husband. Why, why did yeah. you just do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not it. My husband would be not it. <laughs> and then there's the judging of circumstances where you go, why did life do this to me? Why did life throw the pandemic at me as if somehow or other, you know, circumstances are getting at you in particular? Why does this always happen to me? And I was really fascinated by that because I knew I was self-critical. I didn't realise quite how much I judged other people. Oh, interesting. She's wearing that. Why would you, you know, all of that that's going on in your head all the time. And then that, 
why does this keep happening to me and so forth. So finding out about that, I found really fascinating. And then it breaks it down into how you particularly self-sabotage. Yeah. I already knew I was a control freak. So I wasn't at all surprised that that came up quite high. But finding out that I had really, really strong people pleasing tendencies was really, really helpful for me in a working environment to realize, ah, oh, that's that's how I get in my own way because I'm too quick to say things or too quick to volunteer to do things, which stops me from doing the things that are really, really important to me. So finding out about that was really useful. Recognizing that my husband is more of an avoider and starting to understand about why that, you know, how that works. So it also really helped me in understanding my relationship with other people. So just doing the free assessment, I found really, really helpful. And then I there was an opportunity for coaches to learn on a training program to become positive intelligent coaches. And I signed up for that and I was blown away by it as I was able to start understanding how we could then start working on unpicking all of those ways that we we self-sabotage yeah wow so that's what you do now then so do you offer coaching positive intelligent coaching alongside yeah yeah so I I'm, I now blend it in with the other aspects of my coaching I I mostly coach women mm -hmm. um, working women and I find that I I personally think women really do hold themselves back in the workplace more than men do yeah um, and so I think being aware of all of these different things and trying to help them with um, with the techniques of positive intelligence can really really help women progress in their careers why do you think women hold themselves back more than men so there's quite a lot of evidence that suggests that women suffer from lower self-confidence in the workplace. Um, there's a brilliant book by a woman called Jill Whitty Collins, who shows that time and time again in the workplace, confidence gets mistaken for competence. And men mm -hmm. are better at projecting themselves confidently. And so they get those promotions, they get those jobs because their confidence is mistaken for competence. And women have got the competence, but don't have the confidence to put themselves forward. And again, there's a very famous, well-known Hewlett Packard um, report that came out a long time ago, where they looked at men and women applying for jobs. And the men would go, I can do 50% of that, I'll wing the rest. I mean, we're talking sweeping generalizations here, but on the whole, you know, the research shows yeah men will apply for something when they can do some of it and they have the confidence to think I'll bust the rest the women will look at it and they'll go I can do 90% of that but there's that one thing that I can't do so I won't apply until I can do all 100 of them so I I think women do need more help um, in order to help overcome those things that that traditionally seem to have held women back yeah, and a lot of it is that lack of confidence. Yeah, yeah, and so I think developing that self awareness and um, yeah, and working on that can really, really help. So I, 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 I do a lot. I think confidence is probably or low confidence is probably the biggest thing that comes across in the women that I coach. Why do you think women have lower confidence than than men generally on this generalization? <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the tricky things. There's a lot out there about should we be sorting out, you know, should we be helping women to become more confident or should we be sorting out the system? Yes. Because the system is built on, on patriarchy. There's no there's no getting away from that. And it's a really difficult one because I get that lots of women, you know, lots of women are very angry and saying it's not our fault. Actually, these the qualities that we have are really beneficial once we get into the workplace and once we are you know looked yeah. at and, and so forth it's the system that's broken not us mm -hmm. the problem is I think it you need a certain amount of confidence to help to break down the system so I think we have to try and do the two in and probably panel. you need the confidence to say actually it's the system exactly exactly so I think it is difficult for women we are judged more on what we look like mm -hmm. Um, we we are judged more on what we say. Yeah. 
Um, and men, we know that there's a like me bias. So people tend to recruit and build organizations based on the like me. And because it has always been patriarchal, those people in an organization will look to recruit more people who are like them. And that tends still to be more men. So you've got women struggling in what is still a man's world. And that does dent your confidence when you don't get that promotion. Mm -hmm. It's hard not to go, actually, that's the system. We tend to use it as another thing to go, oh, well, it's me. Bash ourselves. Bash ourselves, which is why I... I personally think we should be skewing professional development budgets to helping women more than men in order to try and overcome this this hump of getting us past a patriarchal working society. Mm-hmm. Or maybe looking at how we reward, reward success and what you know what our managers viewing yeah. As success. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a whole. Oh, this is a whole thing know, we, we could be talking for hours about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think it is. I think it would be really good if more, if more organisations work worked out that it is stacked against women and they do need more support um, through things yeah. like coaching and sponsorship and mentoring and and so forth. So Jordan says hi guys. Oh, hi. Came on late. That's fine. Thanks for being here. Jamie says really loves what you have to say, Maria. So interesting. And Daniela says so true. The like me thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky one. It is a really tricky one. So, so we, yeah. So we talked a bit about inner critic. We do we all have an inner critic? I know I do. So I, I think it's very rare not to have those voices. I mean, I think we can learn how to manage it, and that's yeah. what the positive intelligence techniques is all about. But I think. Well, so here's another interesting thing. I came across something recently that suggests it's very much more a Western thing. But apparently people in the East say, why do the people in the West hate themselves so much? So there's another interesting thing. So I I don't know that it's global, but certainly I think it's a Western thing where we do um say very harsh things to each other and I think that's part of a very um competitive world that we're brought up in where I think the school system encourages competition against each other rather than collaboration um I think the school system I mean again this this is something that I could talk for hours about because I have a particular interest in in education and learning I think the school system I think too young many people come out of the school system feeling rubbish about themselves so I think that journey has already started um it you know I I I think we're encouraging and rewarding sometimes the wrong things in education rather than those softer skills are so valued when we get into the workplace so so I don't know if we all have it but I think, unfortunately, the society that we have in the UK and in America and places like that, I think, foster um, that that negative inner voice. Interesting. Because I mean, I'm just thinking like Elon Musk, who's obviously had a barrage mm. of criticism yeah. directed yeah. at him. Yeah. Week, I so. yeah, I don't know. So I think oh, he I, had, I, carries it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I had an interesting I did a talk a while ago about the imposter syndrome. And we came to the conclusion that only a very rare minority don't suffer from the imposter syndrome as you progress through your career. And it's it's a rare nice person who doesn't suffer from imposter syndrome. And I think maybe, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying Elon, Elon Musk is a psychopath, but I just think that sometimes people like that perhaps have managed to silence their inner critic. And maybe that's not a good thing. Yeah, um, so maybe we don't want to kind of Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, maybe that tips you into arrogance and, um, yeah. and other negative behaviours. Yeah. Someone said self-confidence is a superpower. Once we start to believe in ourselves, magic starts happening. Daniela oh, says that universities are like school, similar to schools, and foster, you know, competition. And Jordan has said men can be part of the change by encouraging positive attitudes and decisions. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So why might understanding why we hold ourselves back be really beneficial, particularly for working women, but I suppose anybody in society, you know, anybody that's looking to progress? So I think um, (laughs) addressing, you know, so one of the things we've already talked about is addressing the whole thing around confidence. So if you start to become 
more self-aware um, and and realize that you are being too harsh on yourself and so forth. Um, and, that, and that so many of us feel like this as well. I think along with developing self-awareness through things like this, also realizing that actually we're all struggling. We're all trying to project to the outside world the best version of ourselves, but actually we've all got those problems with confidence and so forth. So I think the more you realize it's not just about you, um, so I think that self-awareness journey is really, really helpful, but really, really helpful for women. Um, I also think women hold themselves back by, I think they suffer more from perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and being a stickler and having that attention to detail and just recognizing that we all only have, no matter what you do, we all only have 24 hours in the day. And so helping you to be more self-aware and recognizing the things you need to let go of, the things that are good enough. Um, I think understanding those things can really help women free up really precious time. We're so time starved mm -hmm. and women still do tend to have the caring responsibilities on top of everything else. So trying to free up time by not worrying about things, um, by not, you know, listening to that inner critic and so forth, by finding time management techniques that can help, can free up that precious time that helps us to progress our careers. Yeah. So, so even if you can just find an extra half an hour in the day by letting go of the things that don't matter, by not worrying about so many things, that over time could build up a huge amount of extra time for our careers. Yeah. There's a really good saying I've heard so many times, um, done is better than perfect. And I yeah, really do absolutely. live by that because absolutely. sometimes you just got to get something out there. And you, yeah. you know, it yeah. probably isn't perfect, but it, it does. <laughs> yeah. And so often I think our saboteurs tell us, no, I'm not, you know, I, I won't launch that new business career or I won't pitch for that project or I won't apply for that job until everything's perfect. And actually recognizing the value of just jumping in, even when we're not ready, uh, is, you know, I, I'm sure that's how some people have managed to supercharge their careers because they're willing to just take that leap and not wait. So I think, I think learning about um, things that help you to have the courage to just let go of certain things. Um, I was listening to a brilliant mentor, she's the youngest person on Dragon's Den. Um, okay. And I was listening to a podcast that she was doing. I was listening to it yesterday. And she said that would be her biggest piece of advice about don't keep waiting until you're ready. Don't keep waiting until everything's perfect. Just dive in now and learn as you go along. And I think I think that's one of the great things about LinkedIn and places like that and Instagram. We're, I think we're getting better about being authentic about that journey and yeah. and, and so forth. So, um, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so you decided to do the positive intelligence. Is it an assessment? It's a free free assessment. Um, and you find out a bit more about yourself. Then what sort of benefits could you expect to see once you understand special stuff? So, um, so I think, I mean, I think it's, I, I do think it is a two stage process. So for me, yes, getting that free assessment was really, really helpful. The bit that then for me, made me see so many benefits in my own personal life and career was when I then did the formal programme, which you can do through, um, if you're a coach, you could go on the coaching um, and learn through it that way, or working with somebody who is able to give access to the positive intelligence work because they're a, they're a coach themselves. And um, the positive intelligence um, program if you sign up for it either as I say through a coach like me or um, through a, through another program encourages you for six weeks to practice daily habits that are a bit like mindfulness or meditation or something like that but the clever thing is there are ways of you, a you get a prompt for doing it and b you can fit it in at any point during the day so it's a bit like when you're having a tricky situation or you're in a work meeting and you're really, really struggling with it. You can't just go, I'm just going to go and take 10 minutes out and go and do some meditation. Yeah. This teaches you techniques that allow you to do things in the moment. So it's even really simple things. So you start by practicing just rubbing your fingertips together. Mm -hmm. And it seems really, really daft when you first do it. But you associate that with 
this is just reminding me that I am in control, that I can quieten things, I can manage it. So you're in a difficult meeting and nobody needs to know that underneath the table, yeah. you're just doing that. And it's a little bit of a moment of mindfulness, of mental well-being. And it sounds really dark, but because you do it for six weeks, you do get into the habit. And eventually it's that Pavlovian thing of, oh, yeah, I just do that. <clears throat> and it reminds me of all the positive things that I've learned about how I can look after my own well-being. So if you signed up to working with me, for example, you would get access to this app that would allow you to develop those habits over a six week period. And for me, it was literally transformational, both in both in terms of how I approach work, but in some ways, actually, perhaps more importantly, how I managed my my home life, because that's. Yeah. Managing that when you're when you're a busy working woman is, is you know that's that's half of the challenge I think. Um, so so yes, just getting the benefits in terms of finding how to de I, I think perhaps finding how to de stress yourself is probably yeah. the biggest thing. We can go from you know feeling like we're in control to overwhelm and stressed so quickly. Something simple just has to go wrong or somebody says something to us that triggers us yep. and suddenly yep. we're feeling overwhelmed again or really, really stressed. And then that has a huge knock-on effect. So techniques that help us to just deal with those moments and keep in control and not be triggered into stress, I found really, really valuable really interesting yeah because I you know we all have these moments don't you where you suddenly are oh, and then you're you know, and then you do it does have a knock-on effect like say you know, uh, you know if the kids are there and then they they you know yeah. all of me that yeah. I can snap snap at the moment yeah yeah it's hard and then, and then suddenly you can't go back into work mode feeling really really good about yourself because no. you know, because of those sorts of things so it's difficult isn't it so if somebody wanted to do you could do a free test so how can somebody yeah. access is it the free is it a positive intelligence test or a saboteur so there's the free tool? so there's the free self-assessment tool online and liz i don't know whether you can share the link i gave to you so that anyone can do the free self-assessment test so it's positive intelligence or you can just search we'll share it we'll put it on the replay and then okay yeah. okay so it's positive intelligence and you can and, and do a search for um self-assessment test yes um, so that's the way of accessing the the free work and um and if somebody you. obviously wants to work with me i can then give them access to the app which is part of a paid program. and then how do you use that then in your coaching then so I would get someone to do the, the, the self-assessment test and we can talk about that. We can talk about the areas that they would like to work on and how that's affecting their work life. And um, we can set goals. And then they would also have access to the app as well so that they can be using that in their own you know, day to day lives outside of the sessions with me. Yeah, all right. Sounds really helpful. It's so it's so interesting what we've been talking about, like the inner critic, isn't it? Because when we got on our phone, before we went live, you said, "Oh, you're bit to me." You said your business looks like it's flying. It's like oh, I've had so many wobbles recently. That's obviously, my inner critic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I the longer I'm, I think particularly if you're if you're freelancing, um, the longer I'm in it, the more I realize it is like running a marathon and you have those good bits where you where you're so distracted by the, you know, that you, you're not worried about the running and you're not feeling low because things are going really, really well. And then you have those moments where you just think this is such hard work. Do I really want to carry on? Um, would it be easier if I went back into paid employment or if you're in paid employment? You know, would it be easier if I changed jobs or whatever? And. I've realized that that is the biggest battle is managing what you're saying to yourself and finding strategies to pick yourself up and keep going and um, and and just finding moments of getting a dopamine hit or, or finding something new to help distract yourself until the next until you've hit that next milestone and you can feel good about yourself uh, yeah. again. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? But yeah, it's interesting because we all have the have this in a great Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> maybe yes. not Elon Musk, yeah. but yes. um, the majority of other people do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So someone says we can't control everything. Sometimes we just need to relax and have faith that things will work out. We need to let go a little and just let life happen. That's that's lovely advice, actually. Yeah, really. yeah. And I think that plays into another big thing um, that I think is really, really massive, which is about learning acceptance. So again, it's about learning about those things that we can't control that. that 
you know, so there's so many things sometimes we stress about the weather or something like that, that, yes. that we can't control. Um, and just accepting those things so that we just put our energy into the things that we can change. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people find you, learn more about you and how you can help? So my website is mariaevans.com. Um, yeah. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, so please do, you know, come and connect with me. Um, and also you can book a, so if you just wanted to find out more about how I work, you can book a free 30 minute session with me um, online. Um, so the, the link to my calendar um, is on my website and also on my LinkedIn Brilliant. All right. Well, we'll put all the links. So if anyone's not missed, not managed to watch all this, or has had to duck off early, we've got all the replays um, of all our LinkedIn lives on the Investing in Women um, website. And then we can put all the links in the show notes. So thank you so much, Maria, for joining me today. It's been an absolute thank pleasure you. to chat with you and learn more about positive intelligence. I'll be going to do the test now. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you.